Back again, back again. Oh, we're good. We're good. What's up, though, man? What up, listeners? What up, everybody? Another episode of the Fill Your Cup podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't know if my Wi-Fi cut. Sorry. Oh, no, we're good, man. Hey, we're good. I bet. We're in it. We're on it. So what's good, fellas? (laughs) Definitely an interesting week. Oh, oh, shoot, for real? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, uh, So I posted on my Instagram story. uh, So my... My grandmother, my father's mom, passed away unexpectedly. Ooh. Healthy woman, independent. Um, just woke up one day. Uh, she wakes up very early, like three in the morning. Woke oh. up, had trouble breathing. Um, her <clears throat> life partner, they're not married, but just, you know, they live together. They've been doing life for the last couple of years, uh, more than the last couple of years. Um, took her to the or called the ambulance they came took her to the hospital and within like three minutes she just didn't make it dang man sorry to hear that what was they say the cause i don't know (laughs) uh that's the weird thing it was just like just a freak thing just hard hard to breathe and they don't know really yeah that sucks man you Mm -hmm. said uh was that the grandmother or family member who was having like uh living in flint yep okay i think you had mentioned something about her having like some health issues before no no we had uh went to her place to help her with her basement that flooded Mm -hmm. okay but no health issues yeah yeah, that's unfortunate, man. It always sucks losing oh, you know, she? members, man. Uh, she would have been seventy on April twelfth. Mm. Kind of, it's kind of. I mean, it's, you know, it's not young, but damn, it's right. Early. Yeah, and that's what we're all kind of dealing with now, and you know, seeing everything. And uh, it was again, we had just recently kind of visited to help her, uh, not with like some residual stuff from the basement flooding. Like we came, went over there maybe like a month and a half ago to help her take this uh, freezer out the basement because they were getting a new one. And, you know, she was healthy and fine. And we were like, yeah, once the weather gets better, I'll definitely be, you know, going over there, helping you remodel the the yard and doing all this stuff. And now it's not happening. Promises that can't be fulfilled. Yeah. So... Yeah, man, so that happened over the weekend, and that was probably the most disturbing thing you got over the weekend. Yeah, I let me see what day was. That? I think it was Tuesday. Oh, last week Tuesday. Yeah, or this week actually. I this, think the trouble oh, yeah, thing is I know the cause. You know, you always oh, wonder that the cause. Did she have COVID? No, and apparently they had like. uh just a reg- taking care of um, regular duties. They went to the store, bought all their groceries for the month. She's an active lady. She works on a house, works on her garden, all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, man, you uh, never know when uh, they're going to call your ticket. Yeah. So my content this week on the story has been basically a lot of like, because we don't know everything's a promise like making making these promises of the future all we have is the present it's like we may as well right now leverage all that we can in this current moment that's about it yeah that's the best thing you could do honestly Mm -hmm. um but how did that not trying to make this a sad (laughs) podcast no how did you feel though like you know um that 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 emotion man how do you how do you feel you know it's uh it's still a little surreal that was my last biological grandparent that was alive so it's also like a feeling of like man as time goes on you know i still have both of my parents right now but watching my dad now have no like i watched my mom who had lost 
both her father and her mother, which my, you know, my grandparents, of course. And then I watched, you know, my dad, I was younger when he lost his father. Now he's lost his mom, who he was way more closer to. You know, I'm seeing how that's affecting him on a super deep level. And, you know, it, it's just, uh, life is not promised and it's, it's, it's very difficult, I guess, at times, you know, just thinking about like all these potential promises that we make and, and not knowing what could come out of any of it, you know, like if, if anything will ever actually happen, the future tomorrow isn't promised and I could even go right now, you know, right. in, in real, real talk. I so. think that's the big, that's the thing I think about too. You know, our parents are getting older and, you know, they, you gotta remember they were kids just like, not kids like us, but you know, teenage, I mean, not teenagers, but adults, young adults like us. And I look at my kid like that. I'll be damn, my kid, myself, my dad, or my mom, then my mom's mom. Man, it's like four, it's four generations. Or, you know, my dad's mom, because both of my biological grandfathers passed at a younger, you know, one of them died in the 60s. The other one died maybe in his late 60s too. So just seeing my dad be like, man, he's 61 years old. Oh, he'd be 61. Like, man, I'm fortunate that he's making it this far and he's still healthy. Mm -hmm. But that's the that's the thing about life, you know. We come here and we don't truly know. A lot of us don't know our purpose in a sense of I, I think our purpose is, you know, in our DNA, like uh what we're what we're supposed to do we're supposed to create whatever you want to kind of like use your imagination for in that aspect but um you know life is um is interesting i remember watching this movie uh prometheus in the theaters and i was just thinking like damn man am i um forever gonna exist and i just went down a rabbit hole in my mind for like 15 seconds i was just like damn I'm never going to know what it's like to be conscious, but be unconscious. That makes sense. It's almost like the world is an ocean. And then from the ocean, we become droplets, which is consciousness. But then it's just like, what is it like to be a droplet in the ocean, but not be manifested? And you're still conscious. It's so weird. I went down a rabbit hole in my mind. I was like, wow, life is like, I'll forever exist. After I die, maybe I might go into... Uh, I might be at night in 1545 in Europe or something. I don't know. I don't right. I hope not. Energy <laughs> is not either created nor destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's definitely like after the event, um, maybe just think about things a lot differently. And now, now I'm like, I think my conduct is more just like, I mean, obviously I haven't been like, you know, a negative person overall, but like my, I think my conduct is more like, you never know when someone's time might be or, or anything. So just like trying to pour into everyone, just be the best that I can right now. And, uh, you know, just be there, be present. I think it's the what hardest thing. Possible. Yeah. I think, um, from the family dynamic of mine, I'm not, I'm not always present. And sometimes, you know, uh, that affects relationships, that affects attitudes and all of that. And so I think being present is is, is key, but it's hard in a world full of distractions. I, you know, I just released a video about temptation and, you know, we're always distracted with something. We're not always fully present. And I know I think about times my mom and my brother were over here visiting me, you know, times you'd be like, man, I'm kind of annoyed. But I'm like, you know what, man, they're not going to always be here in Florida. My mom will always be here in this on this planet. So I try to look at it like the small things that bother me is hard. But I'm like, look, she's an older woman. She kind of needs that comfort to a degree. And um, got to be present. Presence is everything. Mm-hmm. So tying into like emotions and, and negativity, man, just like how life, a lot of people, they get consumed by negativity. And I know we talked about in this episode, you know, we, we, we you know, that news definitely changed the scope of things, but I know, it yeah. also opened the door for like 
kind of what my mind's been thinking about these last couple of weeks, just about detachment and what does that mean for people and, you know, learning how, how do you combat negative emotions? I think the, always the key thing is just learn how to detach yourself and detachment isn't, of course, fully erasing that person from your memory, but it's more or less being comfortable and okay with them uh, passing through. You know, it's like see a beautiful flower and you see it and you want to pick it up, but it's just like, no, just admire its beauty and grace. Keep it moving. That's detachment. So we can apply those concepts to our life. We, The negative emotions won't consume us, but it'll pass through us. But it's hard, you know? 100%. I think... Uh... I've observed my thinking a lot through this week and um, a lot of it, that's kind of why I did come up with the topic. It's like, does experiencing and feeling negative emotions, like, is that a bad thing? It's like, no, it, it's part of being human, you know? And I feel like if it stops you from doing and living life, then it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing if you go through things and you express those feelings in that time. But you have to like be aware of where it's taking you. Is it taking you off track? And how long are you allowing it to take you off track? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I had lost my mom back in uh 2022, December. Oh. And that shit was like the toughest. That was the toughest loss I've ever had. <clears throat> and it yeah. was just it was just soul crushing, man. I mean, I had known. I had already kind of sat on the idea of her passing, seeing as she had cancer for a while and she had been sick and we had tried to do some things to help her uh, get better, but her condition kind of seemed like it just kept getting worse slowly. So I kind of already kind of come to terms to it. So it didn't really hit as much of a surprise, but um, it was tough, man. And yeah, like how you say, you know, human, the human existence is a crazy existence, man. It's like, we're born with a, sparkle in our eye and we live like 80 years and that, maybe if you're lucky and then that's it you know that's and it. the question of like what is your purpose here on life is like <clears throat> i kind of came to a conclusion and got some advice from a mentor of mine he just kind of said like hey man like you know your mom she served her purpose you know these people who have come into your life or you know they actually gave you life if it's your grandmother or grand grand uh, or your mother you know parents just in general you know they they come with a responsibility to raise a child to a certain age so that he's a strong male and he can survive on his own or a strong human and they can survive on their own and then you know she kind of did her job so that's how i kind of looked at it she was successful she passed off her genes to me and um i'm grateful for her and um I was sad, you know, and I just kind of came to the to to the thought was just like, hey, like you can be a you can be a sad loser and just be sad and sit there and sulk and you know grieve if you will, but you can also be a sad winner and continue to show up, keep doing the things that you know that this person who loved you would want you to do, um, regardless of how you feel. And I think that's what she would want for me, so that's what I kind of put on my belt straps and I went back to war, man. I think that's the thing like about uh, like the tests, you know, we're constantly throwing tests. And I think a lot of times we, it's, it goes back to that present moment. We were talking about um, in the beginning, not being present, having a kid that terrorizes a lot. You like, why are you destructive? But what is it teaching me? Teaching me patience. Can I pass these tests? Like, oh shoot, I didn't pass. Uh, I got upset with them. So I told him I put him in his room or I flicked his thumb. But it's just like that moment you was like, damn, did he really deserve it? Oh, uh, probably didn't. So then you like failed the test. I'm like, okay, I get another shot because right now I'm still being present. And I think we always overlook those tests. You know, we think, you know, like you had said about how people serve their purpose within our lives. And I think everybody kind of teaches your purpose. Like, did I really have to move from Michigan to North Carolina to Florida all within a span of a year? Nah. Did I have to move to Florida? Nah, I didn't. I just had to figure out some things. But what Florida has taught me is this, that, and the other. So now I'm like, okay, now I know what I know. Shoot, I passed those tests. I just took the experience and, of course, resources to get down here. But I think a lot of times we do overlook a lot of the tests that are thrown at us. And I think 
the jewels that are not the jewels, the tests that are thrown at us are just valuable lessons to. I like to think it's this book called Seed of the Soul by Gary Kuviak or something like that. No, I forgot his name. Anyways, he talks about in that book about how, you know, you kind of piece together your soul. You were born here and then you look at the people you were born with under, like your parents. Then you look at maybe the possible siblings, people you all interact throughout your life. And you look at it like, okay, this person heard me, this person added value. But everybody kind of added value to you to a degree because they taught you. And it's all about perspective. It's like when we lose, when you lose a game or a fight, match, whatever. You're like, damn, I lost, but you also gained something. So you gotta look at it. It's like uh, in the Book of Five Rings. You gotta look at the uh, the large by the way, the small, the small, the way, the large. It's somewhere like that. And I'm like, damn, it's like looking at the whole landscape of things and realizing that big is important as small, and small is just as important as big. Yeah, I like that, man. There's definitely always a lesson in everything, um, even in the pain, even in the joy, you know, you can always get something from it. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like that's kind of, you know, what all these things go to teach us, because, again, you know, life, we all have two events that we have no idea when or what how it's going to happen, but that's birth and death. And so all that happens in between is the lessons that we learn from all those all the things we experience in there and exactly. you know we can see our like we have friends all these close relationships and again they're at some point those relationships they're gonna move on to the next phase of life whatever that may look like you know like we, we said the spirit in the, like an ocean you know we're driplet will return back to that eventually and here on this earth plane we got to be okay with with that part, you know, and take the lessons that those people taught us and then pour into the rest, you know, like those people, like we were saying earlier, they um, taught us how to be, how to live certain lessons that they learned in their life. We embody those things. We pour that into the other people around us and that's how it lives on too. Exactly. And it's a cycle. And I think that's why I like, when I used to think about what is our purpose, and then you, I always thought about like, well, how come this person that is, uh, lack of a better word, handicapped, they don't get to experience what I get to experience. So what's their purpose? Not saying it, uh, what's the word? What's their condescendingly? But I was like, damn, what are they supposed to do? Then you realize that the the purpose, in my in my opinion, opinion is is divinity, and it's to experience. It's the whole human experience. It's just experience being human. Whether you want to subject it to, well, this person can't do this, person can do that, that's still that person's experience. It's not our position to judge. Then you have, of course, the matrix where you kind of have your purpose within the system. But other than that, like I was talking to one of my clients earlier, like I feel like we got away from our humans are the only species that don't have their divine purpose in check. Like you think about how we eat fruits. Fruits have seeds. What we do with those seeds, we just throw them out. Okay. But it's just like, we're supposed to plant. We're supposed to, we like every other animal has their code that they, 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 uh, they download. But then us, we just kind of like, oh, whatever. We're going to continue to operate like a bot, do whatever we got to do. When in reality, it's like, damn, if we just do what the source or God told us to do, then a lot of things, we wouldn't have these issues. We wouldn't have to go to grocery stores. We wouldn't have to rely on systems. But Man has replaced God, and now we kind of lost our our connection back to source. That's deep. <clears throat> yeah, you said, uh, yeah, that's something I think about, too, you know, is like the purpose of the human being. Um, Just like a, like a tree, you know, it's to grow, I think, you know. Exactly. And just to, uh, to reproduce, that's the main thing, you know. We nowadays in society are so many distractions and so many this shiny object and you can get some money and drive these fancy cars and do this and do that. But at the seed at the seed of it, it's 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 mainly to reproduce, pass on these lessons that you learn in your life onto your lineage and to continue the the recycling of these genes for the next generation. To grow. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Simply to grow. 
and I'll go. I, Tyler, were you gonna say something? Not necessarily on that. Just more back to um, the kind of topic part where we're saying like, is it bad that you experience these negative emotions and express them? Ah, okay, okay. Talk to me or us. So yeah. So uh, as we were talking about all this stuff and how growth is essentially the key, you know for our experience here is to grow from all the things that we experience and then pass those things on as part of the whole um, cycle of life. Right. And we, people see us as, you know, high achievers. They see us as strong men, but they also, I think often correlate strong men with people that don't show emotion or maybe they don't express that emotion. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the big thing is, is it bad? Or is it wrong to express negative emotions when you're going through things? And, or like, obviously I've, I've expressed certain thoughts and, and stuff on this too. Uh, it, it hits hard. Um, and I feel like you will go through things. And personally, it's like, we have to, at some point, reframe the philosophy of how we're experiencing our life and just bringing that awareness to our thoughts, you know? Um, but I was just bringing the question up of, do you guys think it's wrong to express these negative emotions as, you know, you're strong men trying to go through this life and lead examples for others? Subjectively, you know, I don't think it's wrong. I think that's a matter of uh, perception. Now, it can get a little tricky with relationships. And I think it's gonna boil down to like, like look at the red pill community. We kind of like giving this demeanor that men don't do this, men do that, because women are often see it as weak. And woman, a, a woman that is not down for you, that doesn't support you, will definitely like probably kind of look at you that way. But a woman that's gonna be fully supportive of you, gonna be like, it's okay. Now it depends on how you express. It, you know, at the same time, I think I. A lot of us will agree if you out here, <laughs> I just can't do like that's like a little like, you know, kind of gather yourself. You know, come on, let's go express yourself. But I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's good. But I think a lot of times as men, we we we've been programmed in the United States, especially I can't speak about the other men across the world. But we've been programmed to think that we cannot have we had to have this sort of like machoism to us all the time. Or we always have to be like can't express. And I even demonstrate that sometimes when I'm stressed out. I'm like, okay, I can't really. I'm not gonna say much. I'm just gonna kind of like ride the wave as much as I can. And sometimes I have my moments where I'm just like, you know what, damn it all. I don't want to do it anymore. And I'll just probably turn on something. But you know, to again answer the question, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's wrong from my perspective. It's not wrong whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of think it matters, you know, like what you kind of said, in what context you're showing your emotions. You know, if you're in front of a a girl or woman, you probably don't want to show so much emotion that she almost loses faith in you. Like, wow, this guy is like, he's not a rock anymore. You know, you still want to maintain a a stoic frame Uh, in, in most regards, you know. I think I think something that's kind of a lot of men are missing is just like a community of men or a brotherhood. You know, brotherhood. I cry. I can cry in front of my bros, and it's not going to be a big deal and have a breakdown. But if I do it in front of my girl, it might be like, oh, like what's going on? <laughs> now she's scared. <laughs> you know? Because that's um, the dynamic of the. Of, I was gonna say, I mean, to cut you off. That's our dynamic of the, of the male and female relationship. You know, mm-hmm. like women look for leadership, they look for security, and if you can't provide that, then they're gonna start. Oh shoot, you know. Uh, and that's why it varies. You know, it varies on how you actually express. But yeah, go yeah. ahead. And it, it it's tough too because they'll try to women in their emotionality they'll try to get you as a man to be emotional with them like oh you're having a hard time tell me about it tell me all about it i want to <laughs> you know but it's not it's it's not don't do that you can go to your friends go to your guy friends and and break down and have a mental oh i'm gonna cry <laughs> we won't judge you in the same sense you know we still know like you're a g and stuff but <clears throat> um 
in all situations, I feel, you know, and then it's how you express it, you know, like if you can, rather than lashing out and flipping out and being super depressive and doing something that's maybe going to like self harm yourself, doing a bunch of drugs, drinking a bunch of alcohol, if you can vent that energy, even if it is negative into something positive, like going to the gym or reading or learning something, exercising your body, running around, uh, running around the block and just getting some miles in or something, something constructive that's going to allow you to release that energy, then do it like that. Mm. Right, right. And that's, go ahead, Tyler. I really like how we were saying, because a lot of this all ties together into like, you need an outlet for this emotion, but it's like healthy outlets. And as we were saying with a brotherhood, you're able to express it to your bros, they understand where you're coming from but also in the act of expressing you're also growing through it you know what i'm saying because i feel like a lot of times when you hold it in and you're you're just trying to be stoic it's building up a lot worse than it would have been if you had a healthy outlet for it and by having that community of people that will help you support you know even like you were saying trying to go to the gym if you're feeling low enough you might not have that ability to pull yourself up and go to the gym. But if you had that healthy outlet where you talk to your people and you're getting that off your chest, now you might be able to take it into the gym. You're in a whole new mindset because you relieved yourself of that that build up stress and and now you're able to move forward. And a lot of people again like we were talking about if you fall onto your woman and she now no longer sees you as that strong man you know, again, not trying to get all misogynistic and all this stuff, but it's true. Like a girl will see you cry and then all of a sudden she might lose respect for you in a certain sense. And if she loses respect for you, then it's just a downhill thing from there. But you got your bros who they understand life and stuff happens and we're expected to be this version, but you also need an outlet. So you just, again, you, you express it, it's over, move on to the next thing. And I think a healthy outlet that I think more and more people should actually give a shot is journaling. Something I've been doing 100%. as of recent. And uh, there's times where being entrepreneur, father, uh, fiance, I guess you could say, if that's for the man too, and having these different things, you don't, you know, I could talk to my friends and my brother, right? But even you guys. But nobody has a kid. So I'm like, damn, who can I talk to about these issues that will really understand? So it's just like, you know what? I've been watching certain YouTubers like, let me journal, man. Start journaling. And, you know, I try to do it. I'm going to try to do it three times a week. You know, just trying to, like, put my thoughts on paper. And I end up writing more than I thought. But you know what made me feel good? Because I was like, damn, I really just put this on paper. And I'm honestly hoping that one day if my son, yeah, I would love him to look at it. Because there's some things included about him. And, you know, my, my my relationship dynamic with my fiance, being a son and being all these different things. So journaling is a great thing if you feel like you can't really voice to either a friend. Because I even have guys that I talk to through email from my YouTube and, you know, we'll, we'll go to WhatsApp or we'll just communicate through email. And they'll tell me about these issues, man. That's why I've been releasing more and more videos about this stuff because I'm like, damn, these are young men that are really struggling. And now I kind of give them my sentiments on how I respond to things. But journaling, gym, um, finding a brotherhood is always good. You know, somebody that can really not judge you. I think ultimately we don't want to feel judged no matter what. Because we don't want to feel like we're pieces of shit. And we're just like, damn, you know, or am I weak? I definitely agree. Do not voice everything to your significant other. It depends on the delivery. Of course, you have to make sure you're on point with the delivery because ultimately, if you shake up the ship, she's gonna panic because you're the leader, you're the uh, the, the the pillar. So if that pillar cracks a little bit, she's gonna worry. So you gotta kind of keep that 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 uh, semblance of stoicism on you at all times. Going off of that journaling, um, something that I kind of do, like I'll have, I'll kind of like make content for myself as, a, as an outlet so like that's kind of my journaling without writing it down because i'm more of like i don't know it's some way to get the ideas out without writing <laughs> right 
Right. And that is it's journaling. journaling. <clears throat> that, that's still journaling, in my opinion. You know, journaling, like meditation, people think you got to sit there. Mm, like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, meditation can come in so many different degrees of expression. Journaling is the same dynamic. Just releasing. Because as men, we don't release, man. We're so busy releasing semen everywhere, but we don't want to release the actual, like, root cause of our trauma. Like, yo, smashing these different chicks is not going to fix you. You're still going to be a piece of shit, whether you believe it or not. So you have to go to the root cause of it. And I think a lot of times, man, from being a, a growing from a single parent home, you realize the traumas. Like, for instance, a video that I watch about forgiving your father for not being there. I presented my father, of course, but I love that man. I gave him my kidney if he needed it because ultimately I forgave him. And I realized he wasn't just mature enough to at the time to hold on to that task. And not in the sense he was just like a kid, but he wasn't ready for that daunting task. Whatever, like at that time, those 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 uh, trials that he had to face. But certainly I, I'm trying to heal my trauma. What are my traumatic experiences not being able to be fully recognized for my abilities so sometimes i go really hard because i'm like yo you got to recognize my shine you got to respect my grind but it's ultimately i'm trying to heal my trauma because it goes back to what we were talking about about healing your soul healing those parts of your soul and you got to find the root cause of why i'm this way why am i getting upset oh it's because of this well like david goggins goggins if i'm not mistaken i don't know if he still i don't know if he forgave his father but because of what happened but you got to find ways to kind of like yo i gotta let this go because if you keep attaching yourself to these things man you're gonna suffer man and you're gonna help you're gonna make other people suffer around you yeah you're gonna outburst in strange ways just because of your your the way that you're holding on to it you know um i think there's a quote that goes like uh what is it like revenge or like waiting for revenge or like secretly harboring hate for someone else is like holding on to a hot yeah. coal expecting yep. the other person to get burned. Yep. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. I've definitely been there before where it's like, Oh, like someone does you wrong. And then you want to hang on to this anger and anger is, it can be a powerful emotion if you use it in a correct manner. But even, even, if you use it the right way, it eventually gets to a point of where it burns you out, where it's like it's not energizing anymore. It's kind of like distracting your thoughts. So by letting go, being able to forgive that person, whoever it is, for whatever they've done, that way you can kind of move on with your life. Attachment. That's all it is. Art of the attachment. You learn how to detach yourself because anger, man, is... It's something. And I ask myself, do I have anger in my heart right now? Hell yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I got anger towards the people out in Washington for not for banning TikTok, but not banning the toxins that's in my damn food supply. <laughs> so that's one emotion. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of hard to be like, damn, y'all pissing me off. Cause it's like, you're hurting kids, man. Like you are hurting kids. You don't give a shit about them. It's crazy. But you know, that's a little. <laughs> I'm treating that a little facetiously, but I, you know, it, ultimately I know I don't have anger. Uh, I, I think one thing that does piss me off a lot though, is just people not being mindful, shitting on others in the process. Like you don't have to shit on others in the process. You really don't help others, man. We rise by helping others. And I think of course our voice is a, is an outlet for people who can't exactly express themselves. And I think that, also on top of that you know being our voice helping those who can't really express themselves we also allow ourselves to ask like the difficult questions and i'd say i mean even there's layers to all of it when we say detachment i think sometimes that can be confused for don't feel emotion but exactly. detachment can be so many other things when you really dive deep into it it's like detaching from the outcome understanding the emotion understanding that's okay to feel it but now figure out why that stuff happens to you why are you feeling these emotions from this outcome etc because that's the thing i suffered with when i was first learning about detachment i was like we well, mean to me i gotta not like this person or i gotta like like not care as much or nah 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 you gotta understand it it's like again i always use like you're traveling down 
a, a river or you're going on a nice walk, you see a beautiful flower and you know your 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 wife, your parents love this beautiful father. You want to give it to them. That's attachment if you pull it. But if you learn to admire it, that's there you go. You mastered it because now you got to apply that to through life. You just understand it, the beauty of it and keep it moving. Yeah, that is huge. Uh, I think it just kind of comes back to like becoming, be an observer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. And not necessarily in it. Like I'll catch myself. It was just like a few months ago. I was like, man, I'm tired. But then it's like, all right, my body, what is, what is it that's tired? Just observe it for a second. Okay. My body's tired. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to feel it. Or you, you can just feel it. You don't have to necessarily give in to the tiredness and let it poison your mind and take you down this dark place of like, oh, I'm tired and I can't do this and I can't do that. Just observe. Okay. My body's tired. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You just observe it. Don't attach yourself to the tiredness and now I can't do this and this is going wrong and uh, I hate it. I hate it here. <laughs> when can I leave? Exactly. No, just your body's tired. That's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you're just tired. That's it, man. So you need a little more sleep. These, I love this quote. It says a bird, birds don't sing a song because they have a song. No, no. They don't sing a song because they have the answer. They sing a song because they have a song. Something like that. I like that because ultimately we don't have to live life because like I got to do this and that. When it comes down to it, the greatest action is not an action. And it's not meaning you be lazy, but it's just being like you be, you be present, be the observer. And I'm like, damn, okay, that makes more sense. I don't know why birds chirp at five in the morning, but they got a song to sing. So let them sing their song. Mm. That shit wakes me up. But I ultimately like, you know, you learn how to take out, take on those different, um, I guess you could say lack of a better word, vibrations that you apply to your life, man. You just, you learn to just observe, man, and not attach yourself to every single thing. But it's hard, man. Who knows? I might attach myself to some negative emotion this Friday at 2.40 p.m. I might be pissed because somebody, like, damn, he, he, but actually I've been doing a good job with that. Just not getting mad with the driving thing because it's you get used to it. You're like, uh, it's Florida. That's what they do down here. So keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then to, uh, to come back to the journaling too, man. I used to love to journal. <clears throat> I stopped just because I had a long morning routine. It was just like, man, journaling is kind of a lot also on top of all this. So I cut it out. But uh, I have like books full of journals, man. I think it was Jim Rohn back in 2019, 2018. He put me on this like nice. your journals. You know, that's one of the greatest things that you can leave to your kids or to someone else is this personal journey of your life. All the stories that you might not be able to get to tell them, they can read and learn all these lessons inside of these journals. So, uh, yeah, I got some I need to get back into it. But uh, I don't yeah. have it. I guess if I really have something on my mind, I'll write about it. I'll write pages and pages about it. But <clears throat> it exactly. has, has been a thing just as lately. I recommend people do it, you know, a couple times out the week. Just you always gonna have an eventful seven day forecast, man. Mm -hmm. Always, it's gonna always be something in there that just kind of you're gonna have some rain, gonna have some thunderstorms. That's just the nature, and the thunderstorms don't always have to be ugly. They could be beautiful. Write it down, put it in there, even if it's like a three to five sentence um, paragraph. Right, it could turn into I'm, art, into a beautiful. Yeah, it could turn into art. And ultimately, like we talked about before passing it on our job is to simply create create is growth man we can just create or grow leaving those 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 notes behind those easter eggs for people to find will help a person grow you don't know somebody from 20 years in the future come across these journals like damn okay they was doing the same thing we're doing now here in 2040 <laughs> uh, in journaling too is anything writing i i found around that time i became very articulate i was able to speak very well able to write very well able to read very well and i think it all came down to writing 
because that daily practice of writing or reading is going to turn you into a beast. Man, I, mm -hmm. so to attest to that too, reading and writing and just being present has helped me with my videos a lot. These mm -hmm. last couple words, the videos, man, have been me just, all right, I'm going to write down these three topics and I'm going to just flow. And then it's just like, oh, wow, this is a lot easier versus what's up, BB? Blah, 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 blah. I got to say it like this, though. I ain't say it like that. Like, no, just be you, man. Because I like the way Elliot Host does this. I'm like, I look at his videos, I'm like, damn, he's hard. No cuts on his shit. He's just talking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, okay, okay. So writing definitely helps you speak. Man, I, I definitely believe writing is the key to just articulation. 100%. I'd also say like a massive hack is when you truly take the time, like say when you're journaling, you're taking the time to like cut out all the distractions and that mm -hmm. moment of silence. I don't feel like a lot of people give themselves time away from all these things that are competing for their attention. And when you do that, you realize that there's not really much that is really that big of an issue that you can't solve. But when all these things are competing and it feels like it's a fast paced reaction based lifestyle that you're living, you might feel you have a lot more problems than you really do on your plate. So exactly. Because it's being present. Being mm -hmm. present. That's all it's, it's it's so simple, man. We as humans, we overcomplicate things so much because we think man has the answer. But when we go back to the source of who we are. The answers are always within you. Like when people say, uh, what was it? I self Islam, I self am law and master. I self law and master. When you look at that, you break that down, you're like, damn, analyze myself. When you get cut, you don't have to ask nobody, what do I do? The body just does what it does. So it's like you take that and you're like, yo, a lot of the answers are already within us, but it's just taking that time to be like, okay, let me sit and actually think. Boom, then it's just gonna click for you. Yeah, I like my my space in meditation. When I make time for it, I'll just sit down, not think about anything. And it's just like 10 minutes. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to worry about making this content or uh doing this task or doing any type where I can just sit there and be lazy for 10 minutes, but that's it. <laughs> After that. It's time to get back to the grind. So just enjoy this moment of serenity. And then we go back to war. <laughs> That's the story of a man. Shoot. A worry-free worry life for 10 minutes. Man. But it's key. Those 10 minutes are, cru are, are crucial. Yeah. It feels like it lasts forever. It's nice. It feels like it lasts forever. Right. Shit. My greatest ideas come to me at 4 30, 5 30 in the morning. I don't know why the hell I wake up randomly and I'm like, damn, that'll be a good video. And I'll be like, uh, just that random, just me kind of thinking. It's not meditative, but it's more or less like I feel my most creative aspect of myself comes like at four or five in the morning. And my body's mm -hmm. telling me is just get up, just get up. You don't want to. I know you don't. But I'm telling you, just this quietness around, it's going to help you just relax and let things flow rather than like, I got to think of something. What can I do? What can I do? I did this two weeks ago. I did this three months ago. Nah, man. Nah, you need that quietness. That's what you need. You don't have that right now. Yeah, you just operating in organized chaos, and you wonder why your shit is just hitting the fan because you're just like, damn, I cannot like organized chaos, man. It's That's like cool. it's, it's huh? like it's hard to you're gonna sit down and now we're gonna make content, and then you're like, no ideas, no ideas. <laughs> right. But no it's ideas. like, all right, laying in bed, 10 a.m. Man, this be good. I, I've made videos like that. Just like, you know what? Just give it. We're going to make the video, man. <laughs> We're just going to give it. Turn up, roll out of bed. It's exactly. <laughs> my fiance does a good job of... Uh, can't sleep. She she likes quietness versus me. You would think the, the Zen guy, so to speak, from... You would be like, man, he probably like quietness. Like, hell no. I like white noise in the background. I like that, that, uh, that air conditioner on from somebody's next door. I like that. But ultimately... When I think about it, I'm like, damn, when it's just quiet and it's just me or things aren't operating around me, it does feel, you feel peaceful. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I will that's... keep a journal or like a notepad by my bed too, because you will get those ideas like wake up, oh, I gotta pee. For some reason, I- idea of content or something comes to me. <laughs> you know what? Roll over, boom. Write that down and go back to sleep. Oh, another one. <laughs> yeah, I'll lose my ideas if I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. I'm gonna remember like in three hours. No, I don't remember. I'm like, damn, no. what's good idea? I've, yeah. I've, I've been in bed sleeping or something, and then woken up like with a melody in my mind. Like, damn, that is a fire ass beat. Turn on the what is that voice record and just kind of sing like the silhouette to the song. Damn, like, there you go. This could be music someday. <laughs> Exactly. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely agree. Like, that's why, like, I don't know. I feel like when there's so much going on and I don't take that time to just sit in silence, like I lose everything. I lose all the ideas, nothing creative, nothing new. It's all recycled. But once I have that time to myself, which is why I spend a whole bunch of time alone and in silence, then it's like oh, creative ideas all day. And I just, I can't stop. So I'm trying to like make, like studio setup where I can just easily quickly sit down, tap record, and I'm already ready to go because I know that those ideas they'll fleet like so quick. I could write it down, but then I'm like, I'll lose that idea. I have so many notes all over my phone. So Thanks. it's like, I don't know. I, I'm like, I'll make a Snapchat video real quick and post it on there. And then I'll have that and then I'll redo it later in a full mm-hmm. format. Right, right. I think I was watching a YouTuber yesterday. And he was talking about the same thing that he suffers from. Like sometimes when he's writing out things, he'll have like a you no, when he's reading a book, he'll have a YouTube video playing in the background. And I was like, damn, I thought I was the only one that did that type of stuff. And uh he didn't like it. And I was like, I don't like it either. So I'm learning to like now just like just have silence, man. It does help a lot. It does. Yeah, I have a straight ADHD mind. If something else is playing, even like a small ticking or something while I'm trying to focus, it's like, nah, that's got to go. <laughs> Turn that off, man. Or the song is too, there's too many lyrics or something in the music. Like, nah, man. Because it grabs your attention. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think that's something that, like, I think all of us just about we we were blessed enough to kind of grow up in the era where we saw the technology kind of advance. We started off with like Nintendo 64 video games. It was really like you could only play that stuff for an hour or two. And then it's like, all right, we got to go outside. This is kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it's like kids, you could say you can play online and just play all day. And they just don't they don't really experience that human human experience that you get, you know, just kind of like I grew up in the country. We had like one Dreamcast with no memory card. Oof. And I would just read uh one of those like goosebook uh goosebumps yeah. books. Yeah. I'd stay in my room summer day, two, three hours. I didn't read like damn, I got read the whole book. All right, let's go ride our bike and do something else now. Your parents weren't having that anyway, too. They're gonna kick your ass outside. They were like, You gotta go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Not being too loud on the game now. Yeah, <laughs> like they don't like that anyway. <clears throat> it's crazy so, how the psychology of video games work because I was talking about that, and that's a separate podcast right there, man. But like, they master game down to a science where now they know the right amount of dopamine, the right amount of endorphins is going to be released, and how you're going to feel. And now we got this paywall. That's a whole nother topic, man. But it's hard to battle that because he was talking about his addiction to it. But it, you know, again, when you have an addiction to something, like I said in my last, not my last video, video from last week or something, about basically acknowledging that you have the addiction and that's the first way you can kind of like overcome that obstacle it's like hey i got a problem i jerk off too much i got a fucking problem man i think about Susie's mom all the time i got a problem so it's just like you gotta realize these things and combat them straight straight to it can't run away from weed and alcohol and sex you gotta just combat it you gotta face it yeah, yeah, a lot of people are unafraid, are afraid to face their demons, uh, their trauma. They want to cope. They want to use drugs and endless entertainment and sex and just all these vices that are really just destroying you. Because it's okay. It, it's you do it when you're ready. It's okay. You're okay. Like you do it when you're ready. Don't listen to your friend. He's not your real friend. He's trying to tell you to do it now, but you do it when you're ready. Poor advice. 
you do it when you're ready, but there's a certain amount of time where it's just like now it's time to do it. I say do it now. Yeah, and that's what I say. <laughs> do it now. Do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it. Just do it. Don't those people that's telling you no, you do it like no, just do it now, man. Do it now. Right. Mm-hmm. Future's not promised. You got to do that shit. And see how everything comes back. It's yep, not promised. Yep. Just said early in the podcast. It's not promised. So today, do it today. Yeah. A Shia yeah. LaBeouf uh, video. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> I, I saw you share that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share it now. <laughs> yeah, I say, it's good, it's good. <laughs> real talk though. Just do it. I mean, shit. It don't take much to it. You gotta do it, and we need more actions, and we need more people that's actually telling people just do it, man. Hesitation is defeat. I think I was in that video game Sekiro. My brother told me that. I was like, damn, I love, I love that one because it really is defeat. If I keep hesitating. I defeat when I was doing backflips. Every time I hesitated, they were shitty. Mm, no. I got some good ones, but more of the story. You got it. You can't hesitate, man. Just do it, right. dude. Just don't do it. Just do it. Just shoot the shot, <laughs> man. Just shoot it. No hezzy, no pump fake. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, guys. Um, shoot. Anything else you want? You guys want to add? Yeah, I need to uh, line up. I'm just gonna say that before we line up. Oh, yeah, I need to line up, man. <laughs> same. <laughs> I need to read yeah, some. here. Yeah, <laughs> my braids need some some work. Yeah, Tyler, you're not will. I can't even tell y'all is bad. Like this is terrible, man. I feel like I'm 45 years old. Man. <laughs> <laughs> now I keep looking at my forehead, like, damn, man, maybe I am going bad. I don't know. I need to line up though. I think it will help me. Attachment. I have an attachment issue to my lineup. So there you go. No, nah, I think you got it. I think you got it right, man. You know, you need to you need to be attached to creating a, a a positive image for yourself, you know, so you can show up in the world. You want to look good, so maybe so, maybe so. <laughs> I, but I need this lineup, and I gotta go find a barber sometime soon, man. But you know, my rent is due, and it's like, do I want to spend that extra money? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I probably need to get a lineup to be honest with you, because I got some stuff lined up, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I think I need to get a lineup. We'll see. We'll see. If I don't come back in the next two weeks and I have no lineup, then you know what succeeded and what failed. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. <laughs> but yeah, guys. Um, well, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast, man. I'm trying, I don't know whether to look in the camera sometimes or whether to look at you guys, but hey, I'm gonna go look in the camera this time. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. We uh covered a variety of different topics as usual so with that being said guys thank you for listening to fear cup podcast peace and love and i shade baby see you guys next week see you next week i shade